Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, and I'm back with another video. Today, I want to talk about karma. Um, <clears throat> it's a really interesting topic that um, I think a lot about. I think about karma quite often, and I think it's really important to talk about. I don't claim to be, this is my disclaimer, I don't claim to be an expert on the subject of karma. I think uh, this is not something that you can sort of study in school or through books and become an expert. I think the real people who are experts that um, who really understand karma are those who are fully awakened or enlightened, like uh, the Buddha or or Jesus or or you know Lao Tzu or or other. There's so many awakened beings throughout history and even even today who really understand karma. Um, I understand karma to the ability that I am uh, sort of um, awakened to my true nature, which is not complete, but it's not, um, not uh, in other words, that, that process has begun within me. So I do understand some karma to some degree. And I think it's worth talking about, and I think it's worth sharing. Um, so... Yeah, um, just wanted to get that out of the way. And what is karma? So karma, by definition, it's a Sanskrit word, and it means action, right? Well, that's pretty basic. I mean, everything's an action right now, and I'm moving, you know, like, that's an action. Okay, well, that's, you know, technically that's producing some karma because action uh, creates reaction, you know, in, in, in terms of physics, I believe it's, they say that every action creates an opposite and equal reaction. So that's the sort of thing that we're talking about, where uh, when we do something and it's causing something in turn, um, uh, you know, typically in, in this regard to come back to us, right? If we do something, then then what's the then what's the the return action? If we if we make some kind of action, what's the return action that we receive? That's karma, and it can be positive or negative or neutral. Right, a lot of the karma that's happening through life is just negligible. It's it's just like breathing, just breathing. We're having some karmic um, reaction, action and reaction, right? But then there are more, much more obvious ones. And <clears throat> one of the things I think is interesting uh, that I come across through the years is that when people uh, hear the word karma, they have some sort of um, gut reaction um that could be biased towards you know its origins which is sort of like religious or hinduism and they're like oh i don't believe it. you know if they're coming from a christian fundamentalism then it's sort of like uh oh that's that's devil stuff because everything to a christian everything um not christian to a christian fundamentalist is satanism right you know they think everything that's you know, they'll have a whole list that's not God. This is not God. That's not God. Well, everything's... So God's like this, you know, very limited thing for Christian fundamentalists. So I don't mean to pick on Christian fundamentalists, but... So, or the non-religious people, they'll sit here, Carmen, they'll think, well, that's religious, right? That's Hinduism. I don't believe in Hinduism. Therefore, I don't believe in karma. Well, karma is not so much a religious thing, and it's not really a belief. So, so what people say, I don't believe in karma, I think, well, really you don't understand karma and you haven't taken the time to understand karma because it's more about uh, understanding the way action leads to reaction, right? A simple, uh, very basic sort of um, obtuse uh, example of that would be if you drop a rock on your foot, it's going to, you're going to receive the karma for that, which is, you know, uh, uh, it's going to hurt, right? You're going to, ow, you know, I just, depending on how big the rock is. If you rock, drop a really big rock on your foot, your toes are going to get smashed. Um, you know, there's going to be karma for that, right? Okay, well, that's an obvious one. Well, that doesn't count. Well, that does count because that's exactly what we're talking about. And it goes in very much more um, refined, subtle, energetic ways. And one of the things that we have to realize when we're talking about karma is that... Um, there's so much of this world that we don't see and we don't register. Like just because we're not aware of the energetic uh, ins and outs and flows and ebbs and tides and movement 
of, of, of energy. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Like, we don't witness x-rays, but we know it exists. We don't witness gamma rays. We don't witness, uh, you know, infrared or, or um, ultraviolet, right? There's, and that's just on the, the, the light wave spectrum and the energy waves, right? But there's so many levels to energy that we are not, even science, you know, science has so much farther to go. I mean, anyone who thinks that we're at the end of science is just completely naive and, and, and doesn't understand that the science, there's so much that we don't know, right? And so when we're talking about karma, we're talking about all this invisible world of things that we can't see, but yet exists and is, and is moving around and is causing things to happen, you know, action and reaction, right? You know, so we can talk about it very basically like dropping a rock on our foot or the energy of, you know, hurt, going out and hurting someone, you know, punching someone in the face, right? It might be a very immediate karmic reaction where they punch you back in the face, right? Or... It could happen in a lot more subtle ways. And we don't, just because we don't see the ways that things are subtly connected doesn't mean they don't exist, right? But that's why in order to really understand this, you have to be attuned to energy patterns, right? To the subtle energetic vibrations. And that most, the people who are most, most attuned are those who are completely enlightened, the awakened ones, right? The sages, the saints, the Buddhas, the, the Christ, the... All the awakened people are the most qualified to really talk about this. But anyone who has some level of awakening is going to be aware of the, the, the effects of karma. You know, how karma works. And, and um, so it, it's a worthy subject to talk, to talk about. And um, I have some insights about it which I want to share. Right. So the first thing is, <clears throat> beyond what is karma, what are the types of karma? Right, um, and so this is not, this is pretty um, uh, exhaustive, I guess. Like, it, it pretty much covers all the bases, but I don't mean to say that there couldn't be some things that I didn't think about. But anyway, we'll just talk, we'll just start. So self-karma. So what is self-karma? Self-karma is uh, when you harm yourself, Right. So basically what we're, what we're talking about here, there can be positive karma and negative karma, right? I just want to differentiate that. Well, what I'm focusing on is negative karma, basically, mostly, because that's the karma that we really need to worry about uh, more than positive karma. It's the one that we fall into more from the ego perspective because um, it's just much more um, common and it sucks us into the ego world, into the Maya, into illusion well, I'll get more into that, you know, the, what, how, how the, the psychological uh, effects of karma are. Um, but, um, so when I talk about self-karma, it means hurting. Like, when we're talking about karma, we mean, like, harming others. Harming, harming yourself, harming others. Harming life is really what it is when we're talking about negative karma. Harming life, right? So, the first kind of, kind of karma, which people don't often think about, really. And that's why it's good to spell this out. Self-karma. If you hurt yourself, you, there's karma for that. You don't think like, oh, I don't count. Like, the animals, like, we, we protect all the animals. Like, everyone's familiar with that one, you know. And it's not that it's wrong. Like, I'm with that. But then they think, like, I, I don't matter. Like, I don't matter. I can, you know, like, fuck me. You know, like, like I can do anything to me. That's fine. I, I, don't, I don't count. But, like, save, save all the dogs, you know, and... And the whales and, and the dolphins, and which is great, but like you know that dichotomy. Um, but there's tremendous karma in in hurting yourself, whether it's physically or mentally or emotionally or through food. Um, you know, food, drink. Uh, I took some notes, so I'm going to be periodically reading my notes. Uh, smoking, uh, drugs, alcohol, pills, um, any kind of self harm, self abuse. Um, you know, if you keep yourself in a bad relationship that you know you should get out of, um, if you're just abusive towards yourself, like mentally, like, oh, I'm, I'm shit, I, I suck, like, I don't count, like, don't forget about me, like, like, yeah, yeah. everyone else, like, we gotta help everyone else and all the other things, but f f fuck me, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm worthless, I don't count, that's self-abuse, right, and that's, there's karma there, right, 
uh, laziness, uh, self-indulgence. I mean, if you are like, you know, this attitude like, we're all going to die, just eat, eat the chocolate and drink the wine and blah, blah, blah. There's karma in that. Like, it's not just about, like, you're going to die, so fuck it. Like, you know, like, it's... Yeah, no, there's, you know, there's also karma in being overly puritanical. Like, we have to live, but there's a balance. There's a subtlety. It's not black and white, right? You know, I'm and I'm not puritanical. Like, it's not about being puritanical, but it's about understanding, you know, how much... How much of that chocolate is okay to eat? And it might just, it depends on, it's different for a different person, right? It might be a little bit, or it might be a little bit more. You know, like kids can get away with a lot more sweets than adults. But if you're diabetic, probably no chocolate is good for you. Or no sugar, right? Or other things, right? If you have health concerns, you got to be strict with yourself. Because that's your karma, actually. That's what karma is. I mean, the, the illness that comes from that self-abuse. If you're sick, you, you have self-karma. and you, abu you have abused yourself. Um, and karma can be passed on um, through lifetimes. So some people are born sick. Well, that's self-karma that uh, you um, inherited from your past life. Or some past life, right? Um... That's karma. Life is karma. And I'll get to that more. But um, so the, the karma for abusing yourself is that um, you have to heal yourself. That's the karmic resolution. That's how karma works because action, reaction, right? You hurt yourself, then you have to heal yourself. So anytime you have to, you have this relationship where you have to do things for yourself um, uh, because of health reasons or psychological reasons, you know, if you're mental Ill, mentally ill, that's also some self karma that you've inherited from the past because you've hurt yourself in the past, right? People don't take themselves into consideration. They, they just think help everyone else, but don't don't worry about me. I don't count. Like this martyr syndrome, this this self victimization, which is awful. It's it's really um, it's common and it's it's a plague. It's a sickness. It's and, and it's not good. Like, you're not a better person for, for ignoring your own needs. You're really not. Like, you, the, life will not forgive you. you want to turn, if you want to get religious, if you want to talk about, like, God, God does not, that's also, like, a sin. Like, sin is an essentially negative karma, right? If you hurt yourself, that's also a sin, right? If you want to get down to it. Um, you know, willful ignorance is another kind of um, self-karma where you purposely uh, don't want to know, like, you don't want to know the ingredients in, in a vaccine that you're injecting into yourself. Or you don't want to know the ingredients in the box of cookies that you're eating. And you don't want to know the ingredients in the sausage, right? That's no excuse. Just ignorance, especially willful ignorance. If you're harming yourself, that will not help you. It will not save you. You will still have karma. You will still get sick in one way or the other, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically. And you will still have to heal yourself. How do you know if you have self-karma? If you have any sort of illness, mental, emotional, physical, um, if you are in either in your job by, out of necessity, having to work on yourself, you know, like do phys doing physical labor, if your job involves physical labor, um, anything like that, um, where you're primarily, you know, building your own self, um, that's all self-karma. And pretty much everyone has self-karma, unless you're enlightened. There's pretty much everyone has all these different kinds of karma that I'm going to talk about, but more some more than others, right? Like in varying degrees. Um, so the other kind of karma, there's a number, but another, the second kind of karma is other karma, other other people karma, where you hurt people, and um, you know that's just as common, you know. Uh, but it's it the difference is with with others is that it's more obvious. Like people know don't hurt other people whereas some people think it's okay to hurt yourself right like that's okay because it's me i'm only hurting me i'm not hurting anyone else i'm only hurting myself it's no excuse but anyway other karma very obvious abusing others harming others uh, verbal abuse physical abuse uh, narcissism theft lying manipulating i mean if you you know that Typical narcissist excuses don't work, you know, like, oh, you agreed to it. Well, if you're manipulating someone, then that doesn't matter. Like, if you if somebody agrees to something out of uh, manipulation and coercion, that's still harming them because you're taking advantage, right? 
or neg negligence. Negligence is just as if you ignore somebody who you shouldn't be ignoring, like your children or your partner, that's also um, going to cause karma. Um, you know, I didn't hurt them. I just wasn't there for them. Well, yeah, you're pretty much hurting them. So, because we have a responsibility in relationships, you know. Uh, if we bring kids into this world, we have a responsibility to take care of them. If we're married to someone, um, we have a responsibility to, to also be there for them, right? Or whatever it is, right? Or any kind of relationship that, you know, if you're not going to be there for them, then you don't deserve that relationship, right? Okay. And that's obvious. And, and, and the kind of karma that, you know, that that attracts is that you have to work with others and you have to help other people. Right? If you're helping other people primarily in this life, then you have other people karma. In a past life, you've hurt people. You know, don't get all like, you know, some people are like, they, they help others as their career. And they're, I mean, they can, you know, it can get to their ego. Like, I'm such a good person. I, I spend my whole life helping people. Well, it's probably because you spent other lives hurting people. Right? Don't get too full of yourself. That's your karma. You're healing your karma. You're resolving your karma if you're spending your life helping other people. Right? So it doesn't mean that you're some great saint or sage just because you spend your whole life helping people. You, that's what you need to do to resolve your karma. Right? Uh, the next kind of karma is animal karma. If we hurt animals, abuse animals, um, eating animals excessively, right? If you're eating animals, uh, you know, animal food um, excessively or I just sensorially like you don't need to like I in my last video I talked about eating pork nobody needs to eat pork for any reason at all it's if you eat pork you're having that's creating karma that's why a lot of more spiritually sensitive communities won't eat pork there's no need for it right uh, any any sort of physical need that you, you, you can you can uh, get through uh, you know other animal foods right fish uh, cheese even beef or chicken um, you know, those are all preferable. Um, uh, or if you eat abused animals, like people are like, you know, I, I find it so funny that, that, um, you know, a lot of people talk about health online and they completely ignore factory farming. Like it doesn't matter because they're, they're all addicted to animal food and they would just want to be like, Oh, I love going to Wendy's and getting a whatever burger or something, you know, and it's just like, oh my god, that's the worst food you could eat. It, it's it's loaded with, um, you know, chemicals, uh, synthetic estrogens that are turning you into a woman, uh, and it's the animals are completely abused, right? That's karma. That's major karma. First of all, it's sensorial. You're eating animals for you don't need it for your strength. I mean, I mean, if you want to eat you know, meat for your strength, get organic, you know, grass fed meat from the, from the supermarket, from like a Whole Foods or wherever. Um, but yeah, that causes karma. Um, factory farms, uh, leather. If you're, I'm not, you know, I'm not against leather if you need it. Like I have a leather belt, but I don't, I don't have like tons of leather things. If you have like excessive leather, like leather jacket, leather pants and leather this and leather that, uh, you're probably having some negative karma towards animals because that's made from animals and it's not necessary, right? It's just, it's an excessive, it's excessive. Um, you know, any other animal products, animal testing, if you're wearing makeup, even if you don't know, that's no excuse. Like you have a responsibility to know that's willful ignorance. If you eat, you know, you're using products that are tested on animals, um, you know, and there's often a lot of cruelty involved in that. Um, or wearing furs, you know, that's creating a lot of animal karma. Um, yeah, I mean, the other thing is like people are like so funny with um, the animal cruelty thing. They're like, you know, up in arms about dogs. You know, I often hear online, I'd rather see, a, you know, a person, you know, uh, hurting or suffering than a dog, right? Okay, well, I wouldn't personally, but, and, and I feel for you, like, I don't want to see dogs being abused either, but, um, okay, why don't you stop eating bacon, pork, sausage rolls, you know, every morning when dogs are, when, when pigs are smarter than dogs, like, there's the, that hypocrisy, and I'm not, like, you know, I'm not for, you know, like, or, like, the, oh, the Chinese eat cats and dogs, 
and the Japanese eat dolphins and whales. Okay, well, you're eating, you're eating one of the smartest animals on, it's just this discrepancy, that this hypocrisy that I don't, I don't like, and I don't buy. Like, pigs are sent, like, just because your culture allows it, like, start thinking, like, why, why are we up in arms about hurting dogs while we're eating pigs, right? Or uh, other animal like dolphins and whales. Like, get, you know, like, start thinking. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. And, and so, and then the animal karma. One of the things that karma works is not just, it can happen in two ways. One way is that externally you're forced into something, right? Like, it comes into your life. Like, you, you have to work, so you have to do, do a job, right? You have to go to work, right? Um, or, um, you know... Yeah, your husband develops this whatever I don't know like an extreme example he gets in an accident and becomes crippled well that's karma right or your child has some some disease or something like that um, the other way it can happen so that's external an external factor will come upon us that's always karma 100% of the time it's karma and I'll get to that but that's karma it's never not karma right um, the other way it can happen is inborn like you have a love for something, you love it, you want it, you just have to have it, right? And so people are attracted to pets to resolve their karma, big time. You didn't think about that, you probably didn't think about that, but big time, right? So people love dogs, right, mostly, and cats also. Um, sometimes fish, sometimes birds, sometimes reptiles and whatnot. Um, for instance, I have always had an affinity for fish. I have an aquarium right now, I've had an aquarium before. That's inborn in me. Like, I want it, right? Well, I grew up eating fish. I didn't grow up eating meat or chicken, right? So I have fish karma. And so that's why, you know, I recognize this in myself. Like, I have, I have some fish karma. So because I've eaten fish, and I've probably eaten somewhat excessive fish, you know, for what I need over the years, um, now I have some fish karma where I have to take care of fish, and I'm giving back to these fish. So I'm resolving my fish karma. I mean, some people might think that's funny or hilarious or whatever or ridiculous, um, but it's it's not. It's very real, right? So people have cats and dogs to resolve their animal karma because most people, especially in America, have tons of animal karma because we have we've built this car we built this culture around eating animal food. That's like animal food for every meal, you know, like gotta eat your animal food, like. You know, every meal is like load up on animal food, animal food, superior to pro uh, vegetable protein, which is nonsense. Like animal food, we don't need that much animal food. I mean, I'm not a vegan and I think vegans are equally ridiculous. That was my last video. Uh, but we don't need that much animal food. We really don't. Small amounts, supplementary, you know, for strength, physical strength mainly. But we're not mainly physical animals. Everyone's like, you know, like loading up on meat and dairy and, you know, all this animal food. As if they're they're out in the, the the wilderness fighting you know tigers and digging holes and like being like physical brutes. We mostly use our brains for stuff, and and animal food does not actually contribute to to um, it's animal food mostly is for muscles and for being physical and for physical strength. Um, that's that's factual. Like we we got our brains through cooked grain. Uh, I know some people think it's through cooked meat. It's not. It's not. Civilization is built around farming. Farming came through grains because grains stay there. They don't run away. Animals run away. Uh, just basic logic. I mean, we can prove it in so many ways, but civilization came from grains. And we have farmed animals as a secondary attribute to stationary grains. Grains being vegetables, which don't run away. Animals run away, right? So if, if, if animals were primarily prim our primary food, we would be nomads because we would be chasing animals. Right, and the, those nomad tribes do exist, but they did not become modern civilization. They just weren't stable enough. They couldn't build cities and towns. They were just they they would just remain primitive, and they were just roaming around, you know, chasing after animals. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying civilization came from grains, and brain comes from grains. Different foods nourish different parts of ourselves, um, and that's another video, you know, for another time. I'll have to get into that. I studied food my whole life. Um, so different foods nourish different parts of ourselves and meat and other animal foods primarily nourish the physical so like this whole thing of like eating tons of meat and then sitting in the office being all you know intellectual that's it's like it's 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 contradictory it doesn't help 
Like, you don't need that much meat for, for, for the sedentary lives that people are living. That's why everyone is like, you know, they eat meat, but then, like, they secretly w wish they could be out running, you know, because they have all this physical energy, right? That's why everyone goes to the gym all the time, because they're eating tons of animal food. Um, and then they live a very sedentary life. So, like, I, I need to go to the gym, work out, right? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Uh, animal karma, you pro like you probably a lot of people have pets because it's inborn in them. They have the karma is coming through their heart, through their want, through their desire. And they say, I have to have a dog. I have to love a dog and care for my dog. Um, multiple dogs, you know, dogs and cats. I love them. I love them so much. That's because you have uh, animal food karma. You've 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 um, eaten too much meat and dairy, and um, you've eaten abused animals mostly. You know, because most animals are abused. I mean, so yeah, you can get, and there's less karma for for eating like um, you know pasture cows. Happy cows are possible. Happy chickens. Happy animals. Totally, totally possible. I'm not against animal food, but um, and there's less karma there. But there's still gonna be karma there, especially if you're eating it excessively. Not so much if you just eat it on a need basis, like you you feel physically drained and you eat some animal food, whatever your preference is, and then you feel better. Oh, I know I can go do my work. That, there's not much karma there, right? That's good. There's actually less karma there because you need to take care of your body first, right? This animal, right? If you harm this animal by neglect, there's much more karma. So in that case, there's no karma, really. You know, if you, there's karma in everything, but I just like I, if you put a like a overall whole whole um, generalization about it, like there's no karma for for taking care of your your needs, what you really need. Not what you want sensorially. Like, I love bacon, bacon, bacon. You know, this is a ridiculous thing. Like, bacon. And American, American culture that just like, it's so stupid. Like, I've eaten bacon. I don't, I don't miss it. Like, even, I don't even think about it. It's not that great. Anyway. Uh, there's plant karma too. People think, oh, we, we can't hurt animals. But we can hurt plants all we want. Which is stupid. Like, you're an idiot. And I'm just, I mean, like, I, I just want to, you know, I say things very bluntly and very shockingly to sort of, like, to penetrate people's minds. Like, because it's just so dense. Like, and it just doesn't get through. Like, you can't just eat all the plants you want and think you're going to get away with, with having no karma. There's karma there, right? Um, so if you're eating plant, if you if you're overeating plants, you're eating plants excessively... Uh, you're abusing plants, like, people just, you know, like, just, like, go out and, like, s s walk all over plants and smash bushes and whatnot. Um, you know what, there's, there's still karma there. Cutting down trees, um, hurting plants in any way. There's, kar there's plant karma, right? And I have plants, I probably have plant karma because I've probably overeaten plants my whole life, Right? There's nothing wrong with having karma, I mean, but it's just it's just being aware, right? You don't go through life uh, unscathed, and that's you know that's gonna just create more karma. If you're just trying not to create any karma, you wanna you don't wanna create much karma, but you know you're gonna have some karma. Um, so anytime you hurt plants, or you overeat plants, or you know whatever, you're you're, you're having some plant karma, and the way to resolve plant karma is to, by having plants in your home. Plants in your home are healthy anyway. Even if you don't have, you know, if you never hurt a plant, you don't overeat your plants, whatever. You still want to have uh, plants in home. But, um, you know, it's good, you know, additionally, that's helping to resolve some plant karma. Um, and, and related to that nature karma. And this is kind of like, we all have this because uh, it's basically pollution, right? Um, and, and we're our modern culture is big, big polluters. You know, everything like plastic to like um, all the chemicals, the trash, uh, commercial and factory farming pollutes the rivers, the water, the air. Um, you know, if we're like buying from corporations who excessively pollute, we're, we're you know, sharing in that karma, which is another kind of karma, which I'm about to get to. Um, any sort of anything that harms nature, um, you know, the strip mining, the blasting off of mountains and mountaintops, um, cutting down forests wholesale, and a lot of these karmas can overlap 
right? You know, the, they're going to be more than one. There's going to be, you know, treat plant karma and animal karma when you're cutting down rainforests. Um, maybe even people karma because you're going to displace some native tribes. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, anytime you hurt uh, nature, you're going to be um, getting nature karma, which I'm calling, right? Now, I'm just drawing these distinctions just to point them out. In reality, there's not, it, that, that, you know, nature is not, life itself is not distinguishing between different kinds of karma, although you're going to get the type of karma, kind of karma that you, that you, you know, that you do. Like if you hurt the trees, you're going to get some kind of tree karma where you, you know, you want to plant trees. It's all of a sudden it's going to be in your heart to plant trees or, or you're going to be forced to in some way. Like you're going to be able to, or you're going to have to like give money to, to some charity that is actually a real charity. A lot of charities are fake charities, you know, but it is a real charity that contributes to planting trees or something like that, right? Or cleaning up the rivers or the oceans, or, you know. Um, yeah, so, and then the next kind of karma is collective karma. Whenever, if you're a part of a group um, that hurts others, remember, basically, we're talking about hurting life in some form or another. Um, if you're a part of a group that does that, then you're part, then you have collective karma, like America is a great example. America goes into other countries, and then, like, we, we create some false flag scenario, and then we overthrow the government and put, and put in a, a new um, you know, puppet government, or not, you know, in the case of Libya, which is just a hellhole, we ruin Libya, like, there's huge karma for these kinds of things, uh, Iraq, we tried to do it to Syria, but thank God Russia stepped in, you know, so many other countries, right, um, <clears throat> uh, we all have collective karma for that, right, people don't realize, right, uh, as Americans, we have, and we also have some positive karma, I'm not so much talking, I'm just kind of focusing on the we have tons of positive karma, but we also have negative karma too. And they don't always negate each other. Sometimes they can, but sometimes they can just both coexist together. Like people can have positive karma of this kind and negative karma of another kind, and they're both there at the same time. Sometimes they can negate each other even now, but sometimes they don't. Anyway, America does have a lot of positive karma. I'm not trying to bash on America, but America has a lot of negative karma too, right? And so this is collective karma. And so like when when we go over there and destroy a country and we're destroying like many, many families as well, killing, you know, children and, and wives and husbands and innocent civilians. Right. And then, you know, and then some some act of terrorism comes back on America. Well, that's kind of our karma. Right. Like, don't think like these evil terrorists. Now we have to go in there like after we've destroyed their country, we have to go in there and destroy their country again, you know, because like, how dare they come and bomb our, you know, like do something on like, we, we kind of deserve it. Like it's karma, right? We went over there and killed innocent people, husbands, wives, children, family, loved ones, cities, towns, you know, destroying whole nations. I mean, severe karma to destroy a nation that is like, it didn't do what you wanted. So you go and destroy it. That's like awful. It's like the worst thing you can do. One of them, right? And we've done that numerous times, right? And, oh, Putin, Putin's such a bad man. He's going in there and, you know, defending his, his own nation. Oh, my God. Like the, the, the stupidity and hypocrisy of Americans, of, of people in general, is just like, oh, my God. You're just so dumb. Like, the masses are the dumbest. Like, whatever the masses do, that's just the dumbest thing possible like whatever the masses are for that's that's the dumbest that's the most ignorant and stupid that's like the lowest pray for ukraine Just shut up <laughs> anyway <clears throat> collect that's collective karma right and if, if it ha you know whatever group you're part of whether you agree to the thing or not if you're a part of that group you have that karma it, whether it's religion or some other kind of group, um, political, you know, political party, political persuasion, um, uh, nationality, race, ethnicity, whatever group you're a part of, you have some karma, right? So there's karma in everything. That's why karma affects different groups of people. Um, you know, um, and it's, it's not always obvious, 
but there is karma there. It, everything is karma. Like a certain group suffer a certain fate. It's because of karma. Right? Okay? Uh, people don't like to hear that. But it's kind of true. And I'll just say like because... Uh, Alright. So just... Because my background is Jewish even though I'm not religious. There's plenty of Jewish karma. We don't need to talk about the details. But just think about it. There's Jewish karma. Right? But there's plenty of other groups. Doesn't matter what kind of group. There's going to be group karma. Um... And so the next kind of karma is abstract karma, right? This means abstract, all abstractions are mental, right? So abstract karma means mental karma. So like if you go and bash religion, like some people are bashing other religions, you're creating a karma, you're creating an abstract karma that will have to come back to you. Or you're bashing this ideology or that ideology. Like let's say I just like, even even if it's even if it's like it sounds really stupid and dumb to you like Scientology, right? I don't believe in Scientology. It's probably you know pretty stupid. No more stupid than a lot of other things. But like let's say I spent a lot of time like bashing Scientology. Well, my karma might be that you know ten years from now I become a Scientologist, right? That actually happens quite often if you study the the, the course of people's lives. Sometimes it happens over multiple lives so we don't get to see the chain of events. But sometimes, many times in, in one life, you can see somebody's really against something, then they become the thing that they were against. So be careful what you, even mentally, like you can attract that kind of karma. You think, I'm not hurting anyone, I'm just bashing this stupid idea. Well, you're creating some karma and you, you're probably going to have to, you know, backtrack at some point or, or fully go in reverse you know, and embrace that thing that, that you spent years, you know, depending on how, if you just say like one thing, like Scientology is stupid and that's all you ever say. Well, it's probably not going to be much karma, you know, uh, for that. But, um, you know, and I, I do, I'm, I'm not innocent. I, I, you know, I'm a Gemini. I, I can't, it's hard for me to keep my opinions to myself. So I probably create a lot of karma about, you know, saying all kinds of things about all different things. Right. But that kind of karma exists. And the last kind of karma, it's, it's kind of like group karma, but it's ancestral or family karma. We inherit the karma from our parents, right? You know, whatever uh, our parents did, well, we're reaping the benefits. I mean, one of the things I can say is that my grandfather was, um, he would say he made a mon lot of money uh, making handbags, leather handbags. So there's karma there because um, leather comes from animals, right? And he made a lot of money on animals. Well, there's, I mean, there's, there's definitely karma there. So what was the karmic retribution? Well, um, what was the family karma? Well, my mom, uh, at a young age, um, turned to macrobiotics. And although it wasn't completely vegan, she pretty much um, didn't eat any, mostly no animal food. She ate some animal food, I guess, on and off. But like a lot of times, and not vegan ideology, but... Um, her karma was, there was a lot of animal food karma, not just from handbags, but, um, and also to me, because I also benefited, you know, we benefited from the money. A lot of that money went to us that came from the handbags, which are made of leather that originated in cows. So a lot of cows made us money, right? I've eaten, I've, I've lived off of the money that came from cow, you know, cow's lives, you know, so there's karma there, right? Um, so like I was raised without meat. That's the kind of karma because, like I said, it's inborn. Like there was, she didn't think like, oh, my my parents made money off of cows, therefore I can't eat cows anymore. It wasn't like that. It was just like I, her inborn in her that she didn't want to, and 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 like I said, she's not a vegan, but she doesn't eat any animal food like right now. But the difference is the ideology. Again, going back to veganism. Veganism is an ideology. You cannot eat any animal food because that's your karma, but you don't have to be a vegan, right? There's two separate things because vegans go around, you know, preaching like animal food's bad and nobody should eat any animal food. Well, that's not what somebody who is not a vegan but who just doesn't eat animal food um, for various reasons will, will do. They, they'll, they'll, they're probably going to say, well, I don't want to, but you can, and that's fine, like to each their own. But veganism is that the ideology. It's almost like a religion, a cultish religion. Anyway, enough about that. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be family karma. Because, like, even if you didn't do it, you're benefiting off of it. If your parents, you know, 
if, you, if your parents were involved in politics and did some shady dealings that uh, was corrupt and hurt people, well, you have that, you have some negative karma there, right? Or whatever it is, right? They, they were a, a factory farmer or they, they hurt people in some way. They took advantage, manipulated, cheated, lied, stealed. Uh, you, you definitely receive their karma. And it also works in reverse. If they did positive things, you're going to get the positive karma. But positive karma isn't always better. And I'm going to get to that as well. <clears throat> Well, I'll just I'll just talk about that now because that's the last of the the types of karma. Those are the types of karma. And maybe there's some other ones, but that pretty much covers the types of karma. Um, just to you know compartmentalize it in your mind, just so you can see all the different types of karma um, that you don't want to incur, right? But why why would you you know people you might think well positive karma sounds awesome like let's just build up tons of positive karma why would we not want to build up tons of positive karma well let's say that you have tons of positive karma and you're reaping it in this lifetime and because of that like you're born to a wealthy family you have all these riches luxury you never have to work um and you have put into a position of power and authority and um now all you know is wealth and power and easy living um, well that's so easy to c become corrupt in that environment because we don't you know we don't remember the past so much especially we don't remember past lives even if you don't believe in past lives I mean um, I do uh, but even regardless like you know just to, to understand karma like you have to understand that this is everything is karma so whatever circumstance that you're born into, if it's very positive, you can just become corrupt in that in that po overly positive environment. Too much money, too much power, too much, you know, all you know, easy living. It's easy to to, to just you know, even if you're, if let's say your karma runs out, well, you just want to keep go keep it going. So now you turn now you turn negative and just say, well, I'm gonna you know take advantage of people, lie, cheat, and steal to to keep keep it going, keep my money keep wealth, keep power. Now you're just creating a whole bunch of negative karma. So like positive karma can turn to negative karma very easily. Um, so you don't want to think like, well, I'm just going to do all these good things, you know, from now on. Um, what you want to do is to resolve your karma, right? So let's get into that. Um, I don't know if you ever watched Dolores Cannon but um, she's great she's uh, she has all these videos on YouTube wrote tons of books she was a hypnotherapist the originator and and um, brought people into like full somnambulism if that's what it's called where she could actually um, take people um, in full hypnosis uh, to where they remember their past lives and even in between lives it gets very um, uh, Woo woo, like very deep into like really um, controversial stuff, where um, you know a lot of people don't want to go there. But anyway, I remember one of the videos that I watched. She was talking about um, the process of in between lives before we we're born, um, how it goes. And I've heard this before, so this is this is why it resonates with me, and also my own understanding, my own intuition. That before we're born, um, our soul um, plans out our life. And it meets with our guardian angels because we have guardian angels uh, that can change one or more. Um, <clears throat> and we plan out our life. And we, we base our, our life's plan on our karma. right? And so mostly our negative karma because that's what mostly people have. But also positive karma. But let's say we have a big bag of karma. We, based on our soul's needs, will pick and choose out of our karma. Because most people um, have more karma than they can live out in one life. So they're going to pick certain karmas. And they're going to plan their life based on those karmas. And that accounts for 70% of our life. Um, and that's called, in, in Hindu, parabdha karma. Hard karma. Karma that's unavoidable. Karma that we're going to experience no matter what, basically. Um, and even though life is not, uh, you know, set in stone, there is, there is this, this path, this trajectory that we all follow 
that is is um, uh, virtually unavoidable. Like there's just certain things that are going to happen, right? And it doesn't mean that they have to happen, but it means that eventually they're going to get resolved. Like, I mean, there's, we don't take away, life is still spontaneous and there's still things that the unknown is still, you know, so there's not negating free will. There's, you, you can still have the idea of free will, but like it, there is a plan for everyone's life. And it doesn't mean that things can't go, you know, off, off the rails. They can, but there's a strong pull both from our own soul and our, and our guardian angels and even, you know, God, if you want to put it in that term, that, that sort of like pushes things in a certain way, makes things happen. So that's 70% of our life is this hard karma, prabdha karma. The other 30% is soft karma. You know, it's funny, like people online, like you'll see often like in astrology groups, like how do we tell if this relationship is karma or this karma or this, what is this karma? What does this mean? Is, is this karmic or... This is so karmic, you know, like you, you hear that a lot, like if you get in like spirit, new age, astrology, spiritual things. What they don't realize is that everything's karma. It's all karma. There's no, there's no not karma. It's just that 70% is hard karma and 30% is soft karma. So what they're really asking is, is this, how do we tell which is the, the hard karma kind of relationship? You know, like certain relationships, they just feel like destined those are like hard karma relationships. And, and then the 30%, you know, certain relationships are just sort of light and airy and they just seem kind of insignificant. Those are the soft karma. But what you're not going to get is something that's not karmic, non-karma relationships or non-karma situations, non-karma this or that or whatever, where something just doesn't fit, right? You're always going to have some kind of karma in your, in your working, whether it's hard karma or soft karma. And the difference is that it, the hard karma is planned out and our soul's the you know our soul's planning for the map of our life whereas the soft karma is just sort of something that fits your karmic um uh, blueprint or you know if it doesn't fit then it's not going to happen it's just you know if you're it, it, you know if it's not in your karma to to date a supermodel you won't date a supermodel like whatever like you know that's just one or if it's not in your karma to to win the lottery you're just not going to you're not going to win the lottery by chance you know that's just not going to or it, or if, if let's say you know because life is completely spontaneous you do it'll be taken away from you if it's not your karma to have that kind of money right you know you just won't get it like it won't work out like you're not going to get the things that you're not supposed to get in other words but there is this soft karma that that, that you know 30% that 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 kind of, that fits but that's not planned you know that that can happen, right? Um, so, one hundred percent of our life is karma. So, whatever your job is, you know, even though you hate it, you might hate it. Maybe you hate it. That's still your karma. Whatever your situation is, you're stuck in this situation, that situation, it's circumstance it's beyond your control. That's still your karma, right? You you hate your situation. You hate living the way you're living. The the, the poverty or the people you have to live with or the deal the job or the where whatever it is it's still your karma right um so what's the point of all this like talking about all this karma the point is that um you want to resolve your karma um and how do how do you resolve your karma uh first of all by understanding that your life is karma that everything in your life is karma. It's all karma and it's meant for you. It's your prescription. Um, you know, my um, sort of, my spiritual teacher, uh, Vanessa Stone, um, she always said, I mean, she clarified so much for me. She always said, your life is a perfect prescription for the evolution of your soul. And um, that that's what the, I'm talking about here. Like, that's, your life is your karma so in order for you to advance and grow in your life the first thing you have to do is accept that everything in your life is not just chance circumstance like bad luck you got dealt a bad you hear this often like you got dealt a bad hand of cards like it's not a hand of cards i mean if it is it's karmic it's karmic cards it's you're supposed these are the cards you're supposed to get because that's your karma like so accept that there's lessons 
in there for you and that these are learning opportunities for you even if you hate it like karma is never comfortable because those are all the things that you that you need to grow so it's all there for your growth so try and try and digest this try and accept this like um instead of fighting it because you're just creating suffering for yourself fighting your your karmic situations because it's just going to keep coming back to you you're not going to get away with it you know if you if hating you know resolve hating our life circumstances resolved anything i mean we'd all be you know in much better circumstances than we were but that's not the way it works we overcome our circumstances by diligently working through our karma so the attitude is very important whatever your circumstances try and develop an attitude of understanding and even if you can't appreciate it yet understand that that's what you need in order to grow right and then so do your duty do your diligence that's your karma you're resolving your karma whatever your circumstances are whatever your job your home life your relationships your lack of relationships whether you're alone whether you're poor whether you just got to deal with all sorts of stuff that you don't want to that's your duty do it with a great attitude and know take the satisfaction know that every single day you do your duty you're resolving your karma and your karmic slate is becoming clean that's the first thing the second thing is don't create new karmas like people will have these you know like menial like just one example like you let's say you're a, a laborer laborer and you're just like just like your pride thinks you should be like a rich you know financier financial expert on wall street or whatever it is i don't know rich somebody rich movie star rich singer right and your pride's wounded you're like oh i'm just a lowly laborer menial worker uh poor me i i deserve so much better so like you do your work begrudgingly you have a crappy attitude then you go home and you get drunk because you just like sh- sh- i don't deserve this i'm give me give me some give me some bud light you know i'm drink my bud light whatever chocolate bars and my fried chicken and pizza and coca-cola and all this stuff because poor me and like i don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and i'm poor and all this stuff um you're you're perpetuating your karma you're just every bit of karma that you resolve you're 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 um creating new karma in this place and possibly more probably more so you're digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper in debt essentially karmic debt because now um you're you're hurting yourself so now you have all this self karma that you're going to have to re- resolve because you're going to get you're going to get diabetes, cancer, mental illness. Um and then your attitude is so bad, your nervous system's wrecked, your mental health, you're going to abuse other people. You're going to abuse your your you know what re- relationships you have left. You're going to yell at them, be mean to them, take advantage of them, and then you like that victim mentality is going to create a sense of entitlement. So you're going to think I deserve all this stuff that I'm not getting therefore I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it from other people who I perceive uh have it have it really good, you know, like that's going to create all sorts of more karma. Right? So it's really important to understand that 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 um I don't want to say deserve cuz it's a kind of a loaded word, but it's just your karma. It's your your life is your karma and you you it it's your medicine. It's what you get for you know everything you've done in the past and and you say I didn't deserve this I I was I was abused I was you know but I know it can be a really hard thing I don't want to get specifics and and be like a people get triggered really when you say it's your karma but I mean that's the truth and that's you know it doesn't and I'm not mitigating sort of the need for compassion and empathy when people go through hard times not at all like you can you know have suffer your karma and still be worthy of compassion it doesn't make it's not an excuse to get cold and just be like somebody's suffering well that's their karma right that's not at all what i'm talking about because that creates new karma that's the, the, an inappropriate response right somebody's suffering somebody has trauma somebody's abused somebody's going through a hard time that deserves compassion that deserves understanding even if it is their karma right but it doesn't negate the fact that that's their karma and we can't excuse that we can't just say you didn't deserve this this is not your fault and you didn't deserve fault fine fault we can do away with but you know or, or even deserve we can do away with i'm not going to say like you deserve people deserve 
the abuse or whatever or you know violence right of any kind of like that but um karma i will say karma it's karma that's the simplest most plainly i can put it it is your karma um i think there's the balanced middle ground that we have to tread and it's not leaning to one side or the other where it's like poor you you're a victim or cold-hearted you deserve it right both of those things are way to one side or the other there's a middle ground that's very um balanced and appropriate humane humanity we must keep our humanity intact um but anyway i guess sort of got sidetracked that's okay um but yeah we want to so we want to do our due diligence and um follow be responsible like um, um do our duties you know whatever it is with the best attitude possible knowing that this is your karma and um not create new karmas and that's how we're going to quite i mean i think we would progress much more rapidly than we we really imagine because i think what's happening most of the time with most people and myself included throughout most of my life we perpetuate the, 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 the karma. So it's a karmic loop. So when something loops, it appears like it never gets better. So we don't qu quite often realize how quickly we can resolve our karma. But if we, if we go about it in the right way, we can resolve our karma, in a lot of karma in one lifetime, and really progress, noticeably grow and evolve in, in such wonderful ways. And I'll tell you, it's so worth it to do that because... What happens when you resolve your karma is clarity and peace and uh, love and satisfaction and contentment and um, joy for life and life itself. Like you become more alive and you become more aware of the life in this moment. Like the, the you know... We, you know, you hear somebody like Eckhart Tolle talking about the power of now. Well, when you're lost in karma, you that makes no sense to you. But when your karma becomes thinner and thinner and thinner and lighter and lighter and lighter, you start to get it. There's so much aliveness in being present in this right here and now. Um, I mean, I... That's another video to really go into that, but um, it, it's um, on the op on the op opposite end of that. The more karma, the more negative karma that we um, incur upon ourselves, um, <clears throat> the more fearful we become. The more subconscious, uh, the more our subconscious grows, meaning that we become uh, run by our subconscious. Uh, because fear is subconscious. They are, these are parallels, right? So when our subconscious mind grows and grows and grows, then we have all sorts of things that we're, we're being moved, motivated by subconscious. And, and like that, you'll see what's a good example, that mental illness is, is entirely subconscious. Like why do people act the way they act? It's beyond their control. That's their subconscious, right? Multiple personalities, schizophrenia, um, you know, these are even spiritual diseases because it's deeply rooted in, in I mean, that's the subconscious is, is um, we call it like spiritual because it's beyond the conscious mind, right? Um, negative emotions, all the negative emotions are, 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 are parallels to karma, negative karma, right? So like anger, fear, hatred, jealousy, um, greed, um, uh, you know, coldness numbness um guilt and uh lust and shame and the list goes on right um you know hatred for others like the, you know the bur burning you know all that the crazy stuff delusions you know people become very confused the more the negative karma the bigger the subconscious mind grows the smaller the conscious mind grows and when your mind's not conscious and you're suffering, you're living in a fantasy, dream. That's what ego is, really, essentially. It's, it's the subconscious mind projecting, right? Projecting fantasies. The ego is a fantasy. The ego is a mask. The ego is an illusion, a delusion, right? And so this is all coming from, from fear, 
from negative karma, from the subconscious. These are all parallels. These are all the same thing, right? So we develop this dream, and we, you know, in, in like Buddhism, they talk about um, samsara, the dream state. Well, that's what this is. We start dreaming and fantasizing. We're completely out of touch with reality. It's all insanity. So negative karma makes you insane. I mean, that's literally what it does. The more negative karma you get, the more insane you become. And, and this is really apparent with some people. Um, people who are like really insane have tons of negative karma. One example, very prominent example, Joe Biden. I mean, hope this doesn't get deleted from YouTube, but I mean, enough said right there. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, the, the, when you reduce karma, clarity, peace, um, you awaken to the true reality of things. Love, love is inherent. Love doesn't necessarily have to involve another person. Like people often think it's in relationship. Well, it's just it's just as you as a whole. You become more loving. You become more open-hearted, right? Um, your intuition becomes uh, alive uh, because that's because your psychic energy is is freed up. You know, all that subconscious is psychic. It's psychic entanglement. Um, it's psychic binding, right? It you know it traps your your own psych. We're all psychic. I don't know if you realize that but we're all psychic and psychic mean by psychic i mean this can manifest and our psychic energy can express itself in different ways we don't all you know we're not all telepathic or or, or see into the future or whatnot but psychic we're all psychic and that psychic energy is bound up and reduced the more negative karma we have the more um karma we resolve the more psychic energy we have free but the less ego we have so we're not going to take that psychic energy and, and use it for our own advantage hopefully um clear thinking and clear mind because we become less delusional and we become more intelligent intelligence grows this is something people don't realize people think like well you're just born a certain intelligence and and if anything you probably get stupid or less intelligent as you get older that's not true if you resolve your karma you become more intelligent there's a way to become more and more and more and more intelligent enlightened people are extremely intelligent you you talk to anyone who's who's really really truly awake meaning their ego is dissolved or nearly dissolved, they're extremely intelligent. So the more we resolve our karma, the more intelligent we become. Um, and the more that's the, our subconscious is becoming full conscious. That's the, that's the pattern. Unconscious, subconscious, full conscious. So the more we resolve our negative karma, the full, more conscious we become. Um, and no karma... When we completely resolve our karma, we become enlightened, like the Buddha, like Jesus, right? Like like all of the awakened people in the past, present, future. Really, there's no time or space, so they're all here now. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, let's see. So, bottom line is this. Do your duty with a good attitude. Because life is set up for you to resolve your karma. That's what your life is. I mean, you can, that, when you realize that, I mean, it's, it's such a blessing that your life is set up to resolve your karma. It's such a blessing. Understand that, first of all. And that, you know, no matter what horrible situation you think you're in, you can work your way out of that by resolving your karma, by not creating new karma, by doing your duty, duty Whatever it is, even if you're stuck in a miserable job and you hate your family and you hate your living situation and you hate your you hate your body, you hate your face, you hate your your, your aloneness or whatever it is, do your best to to work through it, to keep going, to do your duty, and to not create new karma. Um, and also seek spirituality, God, right? Find out why you're here. Find out. Who you are, who am I? What is God? Like seek it, and that will all. If you do that, basically, you will evolve, you will grow, and you will attract better situations into your life. You know, less extreme, more balanced. I'm not saying you're going to become rich and have like this, you know, beautiful boyfriend or girlfriend and famous and all that. You don't want that anyway, because that's going to corrupt you. It's going to corrupt your ego. Your ego is going to become too involved 
and you'll just become corrupt and then you'll you'll just swing you just swing because you'll create all sorts of negative karma then you'll find yourself in the worst situation after that right so just um you know balance uh peace and contentment that's what we should aim for um so that's my talk on karma um and again like i said i'm not an expert but i do have some some insights which i wanted to share and also it's it's good to have things that um you know we get involved with that we can can um uh, put our effort into uh one last thing is that that our personal will um is an extension of our of our ego as long as we feel like we are the doer um and we receive credit and we receive fault you know we receive credit for things that we do well and fault for things that we do wrong then then our personal will is an extension of ego and therefore we have to exa uh, exhaust our personal will um so make an effort that's one of the things make an effort towards uh the positive the the soul the you know seeking god and then that way you will exhaust your karma um you will exhaust your ego um you will burn it up in that effort that willfulness so always you know make an effort like get up early do all the things that you need to do and then you know do extra that are good all the like the helpful things the things that are you know beneficial to yourself and others um like that and you will quickly exhaust your karma and you will see the results you're not a victim this is your medicine this is your prescription and it's for your own evolution and whether you know it or not you attracted it and that doesn't mean you know doesn't negate compassion and humanity like you can have compassion for yourself you can have forgiveness for yourself you can have compassion and forgiveness for others um but so that's pretty much it i don't want to keep repeating myself that's 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 uh that's what i got on karma um so i hope you enjoyed it and leave any comments you want to below and that's it guys all right thanks bye bye